Hello lovely people. How are you all today? I hope you're all feeling absolutely marvellous. Look, look at this little so-and-so. He knows which side his bread is butter, doesn't he? Fusty. He says no leave me alone, I'm eating. Anyway, he's got a nice cool breeze coming in from the window. He's got a little bowl, we've had a cuddle. So now it's time to actually get on with getting in the garden. So, <laughs> I'm going to start this with a bit of an apology. I apologise to anybody who is getting really frustrated with me for not building my deck and fence. I apologise to anybody who's sick of the sight of piles of wood on my plot. <clears throat> so, last week of May, I wrote out a really nice little plan for June. All the little things I wanted to get done, both in the garden and at home, etc, etc. But then life threw a curveball. So, um... Actually, I'm sure it's something a lot of you deal with as well. Um, elderly relatives. God love them. But when things go a bit wrong, you just have to drop everything and go and sort them out. So, the plan went awry. Um, and I started to feel... Not, not panicky, but a bit sort of time pressured so literally now over the last few weeks I've pretty much managed to get here most nights to water I've had a couple of days sort of long days down here in the last few weeks to just try and get things done but I was getting really really wor worried about the squash in the cold frame <coughs> still got this lingering cough excuse me um so after <laughs> a bit of a sleepless night a couple of nights ago I thought right let's just get on with it so actually let's go into the garden and i will show you what i mean it's beautifully bright again today we're having this bit of um a mini heat wave <laughs> so sort of trying to do work early in the morning stay indoors in the shade in the afternoon doing things indoors and then back in the evening for watering so i'm just going to walk you down to the squash bed and then I'll explain what I've done and then what I'm hoping to do today. So I'm just going to turn you guys around. So, um, right, let me find a position that's not too right for you guys. So I have moved the wood off this bed in order to plant because they just had to go and you can see how they're looking quite yellowy. Um, they're in quite small pots and that yellowness is, I think it's just, they'd run out of nutrition in the pots. So they've all gone in, they've, the bottom of their holes I've put in some compost from the compost heap, so hopefully they've got a bit of nice feed down there. Um, just to explain about the cardboard everywhere, it may not be the prettiest sight in the world, obviously over the summer it will cover up with the foliage, but I use it as a mulch, um, and a mulch for two reasons. One, to help retain the moisture, and two, to help suppress the weeds. Um, now, I also use grass clippings as mulch. Can you see over there on the tomatoes? So every time I do the communal mowing, as in mowing the paths that everybody uses, I bring the clippings over here and use them. There's some in the beans as well. Can you see in the beans there? Um, now, I have seen people put mulch down on <laughs> dry ground, so if you remember we had a couple of months without any rain, so I didn't start mulching. And then one day we had an absolute lashing of rain, so I ran out here and got the cardboard down. I don't see any point in mulching bone dry ground because you're kind of locking the bone dryness in, and what I'm trying to do is keep moist ground in. So actually when I dug all the little holes yesterday evening, the, um, where the holes are for the planting, I cut those out yesterday with a knife, 
dug down and actually the ground under there was really beautifully moist. Uh, yay! Also, the worms all seem to love the cardboard. You can see how they've started chomping away on bits of it. So, the other thing about using the cardboard is it's a freebie! Yay! So, a few years ago I was given as a Christmas present, um, I love gardening Christmas presents, I was given some of that black material, that sort of weed suppressing membrane. Uh, but over the years it's just been absolutely mashed by the foxes. Thanks foxes. So in this year of no spend, um, what could be better than a load of cardboard boxes from the shop downstairs from where I live? Also, uh, I'll explain this in a sec, the, all the cut off water bottles, they're just from people's recycling bins. And then pretty much all the sticks, this always amazes me, um, when people's eight foot sticks snap, so they throw them away. I think never ever throw a stick away, even when it's three inches long, it's going to be useful. So with squash, they are quite susceptible to rot on the stem, so you want to avoid watering the stems. This way, if you can see, can I get you down in there? I actually can't see a thing because it's so bright, but you can see I water down into there, so I fill the bottle up, couple hundred mils of water and then it slowly sinks down and it goes right to the roots and the plant should be happy. So hurrah the squash are in. This is mostly butternut but then towards the back I've got one cistrine, one violina and a couple of honey boats. So this whole bed is from Save Seed apart from the peppers and cukes. So ignoring those from it, this whole bed has cost me absolutely nothing and I hope it will give me tomatoes for a whole year and enough squash for six months. That's one squash a week for six months. Woohoo! That'd be amazing. Okay, so just swinging you guys back around. So much of gardening is about problem solving. Let's just see. So I've piled the wood up over here and I'm going to give you this shot so you can see the distance. I've, I've put it as far back as I can and all the wood at the front is the wood to be used first and the idea is as I start to lay the deck I then create space here so I can work along this space to build the fence. Um, now that the wood is neatly piled to one side I'm not going to panic about doing it, it's going to be a job that is going to wait until I'm back from my um, petit vacances en France. So, this is the problem today. The last of the squash to go in are... Oh, you see the little butterfly by the... Oh, I got distracted by the butterfly in the brassicas. The last of the squash to go in are the baby butternuts, which will hopefully... Well, the idea was to build a big A-frame for them to climb up. Now, I don't have as much wood as I thought I had. Here comes the wind, nice breeze. So, I really, at the moment, I really don't know how I'm going to do it. All I know is that by the end of today, it is going to be done. Because those babies, can you see they're all in the cold frame still, back end of the cold frame. They all have to go in. So the baby butternuts will be somehow over a frame, and then the geet okosomin will be underneath, because they're going to be giants. Uh, stupidly, when I put this celery in here, um, oh, that comes rusty after his feed. Um, I've actually, I think I've planted it in the way, so that's another problem to solve today. But as I say, it's so often gardening is about solving a problem. It's usually a problem to do with space and time. So I think what I will do is have a cup of tea, put my thinking cap on, um, I've got a few bits and bobs of poles stashed behind the shed, so I think what I'm going to do is just drag out every pole I've got, um, every pole, every stick. Now the one thing I don't have is, I don't have any tools with me today. Um, <clears throat> 
bits of it. I don't have any tools with me, so I literally have sticks and string. But I reckon, sticks and string, what do you reckon guys? I reckon I can do something, eh? So why don't you all sit in the shed and have a cup of tea? Whilst I get my thinking hat on. Oh, I just want to show you this actually. No alert, no alert. Um, this is one of my most useful gardening tools. So you can see, it's a clipboard with a notepad on it. And um, for instance, last night after I finished watering, I go around the plot with my clipboard and a pen, and I just make a note of the obvious jobs I can see that need doing, because then it's a case of, I know how much time I've got, right, prioritising. So, number one priority at the top, A-frame. Baby butternuts and geats in. That's gotta happen. Prick the calabrese. Oh my goodness. So yeah, have a cup of tea, guys. Enjoy this beautiful sunny day. There's a nice little breeze coming into the shed, so I'm gonna leave you guys to it. And I'm gonna try and work out what the heck I'm gonna do for these baby butternuts. I'll catch up with you shortly. Was that a nice cup of tea? <laughs> I'm so excited. Come on, let's get down the garden. I've got to show you. So, it's not, um, it's not exactly what I had in mind, but I think it might work. And I'm already looking at it and thinking of next year already. Next year, next year. Because I think the things that I'm worried about not working, I can change next year. Anyway, let me show you what I'm talking about. So, oh my goodness, spinning around so fast because I'm so giddy. Here it is. Now, all that wood that I scavenged from the burn pile, if you remember, none of it was long enough. Oh, it was a bit of a, um, a disaster, but I'm keeping it because it'll come in useful for something else. So, I had to use the last of my scratchy old bean poles, plus, you see this, one of these... Um, uh, metal stakes that they hang netting on on the highways that were left on my plot years ago so I've always kept them and that's kind of helping to give it a bit of strength. Now what I'm thinking in terms of what will work and what won't work, uh, ideally what I would have done, I think putting the flowers in the end here was a bit of a mistake. I'm sorry I love my flowers I'm going to enjoy them but I think what I would ideally have done is, instead of creating one A-frame like that, I would have had, like the cucumbers, a sort of steep side and then flat back, and then have two, so one there and one here. And that would therefore have given me two south-facing elevations. So as it is, I've got a south-facing elevation and then this side faces north. Um, I'm hoping that it's still, there's still going to be enough light for it because I'm fairly open here. I'm not really overshadowed by anything. So I'm thinking that, you know, hopefully that will still work. We'll see. Anyway, I'm just really happy to get it done. Now, it's not as tall as I would have liked. It's only about four and a half foot tall. Um, and I'm wondering if these little babies are going to be climbing and wanting six, seven, maybe even eight foot. Ah, oh, we'll see. It may be that I have to nip the tops out and restrict it to, say, two or three fruits per vine. So, on that note as well, I've got six in each row, which, if these were all trailing on the ground, that would be far too many, but I'm hoping that the vertical space is actually going to be enough for them. If it looks like that's too many, I'll just look at, say, one or two of whichever the weaker plants are, and just stop them in their tracks. Although I don't really want to do that. Um, also, underneath, and I really think this <laughs> might get a bit crowded in the summer, are the two geats. I'll be quite happy, though, for, say, this one, if it wants to trail across the path and then eventually onto the deck I'm making, I'd be perfectly happy for it to do that. And then the other one can have all the space under here. So again, we'll see. Um, I've never grown either of these before. No idea what to expect, but I can't wait. 
And finally, just a little note um, on my little watering pots. So I've run out of bottles. So I'm using this idea that my lovely neighbour Svetlana does, which I believe her Russian granny taught her. And she uses it on all her sort of gherkins and cucumbers and things like that. And it seems to work really well. So thank you Svetlana for the idea. Um, they've all had their first drink. Oh, I'm just giddy. I'm so giddy. I want to kind of, I don't know, wave a wand and see what this looks like in six weeks time ah this is so exciting i love this time of year i love it even more in about four weeks if they all get going so on this very happy note from a very giddy vivi oh look just to say before we go first little nicotian is coming out oh beautiful and look the cosmos they're starting to get their buds as well you see, there was me a second ago saying maybe I shouldn't have planted the flowers here, but <sighs> this is going to be such a happy sight in a few weeks, isn't it? Now, before I implode with giddiness, I'm going to say cheerio to you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful coming week in your gardens, in your kitchens, doing whatever it is you're going to get up to. <sighs> Look. It's all in. I can sort of semi-relax finally. Cheerio, guys. See you soon. Take care.